Hello, can you hear me? Walter, can you hear me? Yes. <laughs> ah, that's good. <laughs> I'm waiting for slides, uh, but um, thanks for having me. Um, I'm Marcus from Berlin, working for Keller Group Life and GBIF. I'm hopefully going to show you a bit about our identifiers and uh, matching services. If I've had known the discussion already, I would focus more on the identifiers than the matching, but let me start. Um, next slide, please. Uh, I wanted to start with Check This Bank identifiers, actually, because Catalog of Life is hosted in Check This Bank, as many, many other data sets. And um, that system keeps lots of data sets, up to 50,000 currently, um, stored very separately from each other. And that means that we need to scope identifiers as we want to re reuse existing IDs. So Check This Bank does not issue new identifiers for data that's coming in, but we just retain the original identifiers that we find in the sources. So for example, here there's an ITIS, uh, TSN number for Pua Anua. And to look that up and check this bank, you would have to know the data set key for ITIS, which is 2001-44, and the taxon identifier, the TSN. So we do the same for names and references, type material, material and other, other things. Uh, we heard already this just this difference between a name usage, which uh, which we refer to for taxa and for synonyms, so accepted names and uh, non-accepted names. Both of them having a name instance embedded, basically. Um, so there are two different identifiers involved here, and pretty much everything in the system. It is uh, not everything, but most of the things and all the name matching actually goes to the name usage because we want to match a certain data set, a certain appearance of a name somewhere and want to make often uh, use of properties of a usage such as a classification, which a name does not have really. Um, just quickly, there's some in, in, in checklist bank specific, but Catalog of Life is treated as a project in, uh, in checklist bank, which uh, creates different releases, and each of the releases has different data set keys. I'm going to show in the next slide a bit. And to not, in case you just don't want to know individual release keys, you can use uh, these magic keys. Three is the <clears throat> This is M3 LR shows you the latest release of the project number three, which is the catalog of life. And um, you can also use something like call 2022 to go to annual releases. Next slide, please. So identifiers in catalog of life, we've, uh, they are stable across releases. They are attached to name usages. So when you look up something, you get a taxon or a synonym back. Um, but they are based on the name uh, being the same or closely to being the same, at least. Um, that means we, if the name drastically changes, if the genus changes, there will be a new identifier for the thing, even if it's potentially the same taxonomic concept. Um, there is work in progress that will try to change that and do taxon identifiers to be really referring to stable concepts, but that's a very experimental thing and it has to be seen how far we can get there. You can see some examples at the top right of identifiers that we use. They're just short strings of alphanumeric characters, 29 of them, because we omit vowels to omit uh, nasty words, <laughs> something meaningful uh, pretty much in any language. And we omit also ambiguous ones like zero and O and one and L, which can look very much the same often to users. Um, yeah, you see examples below. The distinct data sets, are the, uh, releases have distinct keys. So the annual version of Catalog of Life 21 is 2,328 and 22 is 9,837. So you can look up basically the identifier and this is the example FTK is uh, the Rosaceae family. 
in the different versions of Catalog of Life. And you can also use this magic key that always takes you to the latest version. So the identifier for Rosace is the same across all versions, but the content you get back might differ. Next slide, please. Um, I will need to talk about this names index and check this bank when we want to talk about matching and how names, names are related. Um, as I said, data sets in Checklist Bank are not really related per se, so they live really separate in Checklist Bank. But we want to be able to, to, um, to relate them based on a name, and that's what the Names Index does. It's a unique set of names found in all data sets in Checklist Bank, and every data set automatically is linked to that Names Index. And that index grows as data is imported, so if there's names coming in that we haven't seen before, they're just added to that names index. It is not a nomenclator, or we don't regard it to be anything that tells you the truth. It's just something that we want for linking. Uh, and we cannot provide stable identifiers for that thing also, because we want to be able to change algorithms, how names are clustered and uh, linked, and don't want to be constrained by retaining some of those identifiers. Um, it is pure name matching when you link names between the names and names and data sets. It's just based on a name, including authorship and the rank. Uh, it doesn't it doesn't take into account the name usage properties, such as the classification or what taxonomic status it has, or even the nomenclature code, which you could see is part of a name, really. Next slide. Um, there's an idea of canonical names, we call it in the names index, or unqualified, maybe is a better term. So um, you see here an example of Kleinia, a, a genus, so it's sometimes a section or subgenus, and sometimes it comes in with no rank and with all kinds of authorships. It's a, it's a genus that is being used both in botany and zoology. But um, the names index keeps basically is one version of it that is has no rank and no authorship, and that's the canonical names index entry, and that is grouping all the other ones that you can find in in that index, and that allows you to query more broadly uh, if you want across data sets to see all kinds of versions of Kleinia, or you can just query it with the exact version with the exact, exact same authorship and rank as you as you uh, as you like basically next slide please we don't do uh, don't include in the names index every every single variation that you can find so we intentionally wanted to have only what we think of unique names in the in the end uh, in the index and we do a bit of normalization before a name enters the index. There is uh, gender stemming for epithets is one thing. Um, so you see various <laughs> examples. We do minimal orthographic normalization that is just ligatures and diacritics are replaced or normalized. <clears throat> we do repeat, uh, remove repeated letters, but that's only for epithets because uh, genera are sometimes really distinct uh, with just repeated letters or not, unfortunately. Um, we also do remove a silent H after R or G, for example, and various things for I and Y, which are often misspelled. So, um, Authorship matching is rather loose. So there's always room for improvement. Um, that's an area I guess we're gonna have to continue working on forever. But uh, we make use of some dictionaries also for knowing some abbreviations, uh, what they actually refer to. Um, there is lots of variations we spot with uh, authorship years, especially one year off is a very common thing to have. So we actually tolerate that. Um, yeah, ex authors, there's, there's all kinds of things. And um, there is a matching type that when you match to the index, that tells you at least that you have a variant of the thing which is exactly in the index. 
Next slide, please. So there's a service to match against the names index. Um, it's, you can just basically take uh, takes a query string. You can give it an authorship and a rank as additional parameters if you like. The auth uh, the query string might may contain the author, so we do name passing behind. Um, yeah, and then you get back some identifier, an integer number from the names index, um, which you then can use to actually look up usages in other data sets. That's what you're really interested in. <clears throat> so you can then query catalog of life, ITIS, or whatever you like that there's a checklist bank and see how they treat that name. And you can use the qualified index ID or the canonical one if you want broad coverage. Next slide, please. Um, well, yeah, built on top of that, we have a proper name usage matching service <clears throat> that does those two steps for you in one go. So it queries under the hood the names index and looks up usages in the <coughs> target data set. <coughs> um, it, does, <coughs> it does use a canonical match. So it looks for broad matches as candidates first, but then applies a filtering <coughs> on top of that, um, including now also the classification <coughs> code and taxonomic status. Um, and it compares the exact orthography of your query and the potential candidates to match. So you can see here an example of a common genus Oenanthi uh, that we <coughs> that we at GBF had used to, used a lot, which is a bird and a plant. And if you just query by Oenanthi, the catalog of life, for example, the latest version, you get back an ambiguous result with no clear result, but because I've uh, enabled verbose to true, it gives you the alternatives that we have, the, all the candidates that we have considered to do the matching. So you could then um, ask the user which of those is actually the ones that you want. Or you provide already in a query more context, like, you know, it's a kingdom planty, it would match to the plants. If you put code zoological, it will match to the bird or different parameters, you have all the classifications available, ranks available. Um, yeah, to have a, two minutes. Then skip on, I'll try my best. Next slide, please. Um, not gonna go much into this. There's a bulk matching service also that allows you to upload CSV files or use existing data sets in Checklist Bank. Uh, you get notified by an email about uh, when it's done, it's asynchronous because it can be large amounts of uh, data coming in and then you can download it. Next, please. There is a user interface. Currently, it's still on production using the early, the first two-step matching process uh, with the names index. Um, you can download and view results. Uh, there's um, in development already the version that makes use of the more advanced new usage service. So that will come soon. Next slide. We plan to do, uh, we have a big interest in also doing um, Docker images of this web service that you can then create on demand for requested target data sets. Then people can use these services just locally um, with immutable data and there's no relation to check this bank at that stage any longer. And you can embed them and use them in your network um, as you like. Next slide, please. We have on the table Open Refine as an idea to expose those services and also all the other passing services that we have, especially all the vocabularies. Um, for example, below you see German rank called Art is then passed into species, what is actually the one that we want to be using in the API. Next slide, please. And I think that's the last. Yeah, the um, big thing to notice here that currently at least with the exception of Catalog of Life, all the other data sets uh, have only the current version. So if you have resolved and matched to some ID of a data set, the content might change behind that because the data is just the single version. So we plan to do an archive of all versions, but not included in the entire API. So there's no way to search across all of them, but at least for resolving the 
the exact content that you can just get exactly that back what you had when you did the matching. Thank you very much. Thank you, Marcus. Thank you, Marcus. We, uh, if you can stay online, we have yeah. actually uh, space for discussion uh, because the last uh, the contribution is mm -hmm. not going to happen. Uh, I hope uh, uh, that will be possible for further questions. So we're coming to the uh, next presentation. Uh, that's a recorded one uh, from Chuck Meller. Uh, he's a vice president IT and CIO at Missouri Botanical Garden, speaking on uh, unique identifiers for all known plants managed by the World Flora 